Terry McLaurin Foundation took a step towards becoming a more long-lasting, impactful member of the Washington, D.C. community on Friday. We were on hand to witness that next step and to talk to Terry about the event and training camp coming up next week. All of that coming up on this bonus episode of Locked On Commanders. You are Locked On Commanders, your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into this bonus episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, David Harrison, credential member of the media covering the Washington Commanders for CommanderGameDay.com. And I'm here with you every Monday through Friday, occasionally an extra episode during the week. We greatly appreciate you coming through today. Every day, greatly appreciate you coming through every day. Of course, this is your daily podcast covering the Washington Commanders. If you haven't already, please subscribe for free on YouTube or wherever you are listening to this episode. On this episode, we're going to spend some time with Washington Commanders wide receiver Terry McLaurin as he unveiled the next step in his Terry McLaurin Foundation's mission to impact positively the Washington, D.C. community, unveiling Terry's locker at McKinley Middle School in Washington, D.C. We also talked to Terry a little bit on the side about football, of course, training camp coming up, season expectations, how he is improving his own game, all of those things. But first, we are going to take a look at the event and hear from Terry about his motivations behind the foundation and its efforts. If you want to discuss this episode or anything else related to the Washington Commanders, send me a text message by going to joinsubtext.com slash locked on commanders, become an insider today. Not only can you have conversations with me to go beyond the show, you can help influence my coverage of the team. I asked my insiders for questions for Terry, and a couple of those questions were asked during today's event. Again, joinsubtext.com slash locked on commanders to become a part of that today. Partnering with United Healthcare, Washington Commander Star Receiver Terry McLaurin launched Terry's Locker, stocked by United Healthcare, an initiative led by the two organizations that aims to provide students with in school access to laundry facilities and other vital hygiene resources. Here is Terry McLaurin on why this mission is so important to him. Yeah, um, going into this year, I've been able to be now. Um, two years into my foundation and I've been able to do a lot of cool, you know, one-off kind of things around the holidays. And obviously I did my birthday celebration at uh, formerly known as FedEx. And um, I wanted to kind of start transitioning into the next steps. I honestly, uh, being a Walter Payton man of the year, I got to be around a lot of great of the other nominees. And I got to learn a lot of the things that they do in their communities and initiatives. And uh, Cam Hayward was someone I talked to as well, who does a lot of great things in his community. And so I wanted to start transitioning um, into doing initiatives that are long lasting and not just necessarily one-offs, but they could be longer partnerships. And you can see uh, um, years and years of, of success through those those things. So Terry's Locker is the first step of that. I have some other things planned that I want to do this year as new initiatives in our community. And like I said, I'm just fortunate to be in the DMV more than just on the field, but off the field, it's really a passion of mine. For our viewers, explain Terry's Locker. What yeah. exactly is this? Yeah, so Terry's Locker is designed to provide uh, washers and dryers, not just that, but um, hygienic resources, um, toiletries for kids and their families who may not necessarily have the, that kind of access in their day-to-day life. And um, what I came to find out working with United Healthcare, um, a lot of kids are uh, missing school because they don't have access to clean clothes and clean hygienic uh, utensils and resources. And um, I, I just found that extremely unfortunate because um, kids should be able to come to school confident, uh, have the clothes and necessities that they need so they can focus solely on learning, being a kid, uh, meeting new friends and chasing their dreams like I, I got to. So um, I'm extremely fortunate to be able to be here and start something that I honestly, like I said, Nick Sumber uh, did something similar, loads of love. And uh, it really uh, grabbed my attention when I met him when I first got to Washington. And uh, I wanted to do something similar. So it's cool to be able to have that vision and dream come to life. What was it like for these for these young kids? You see the look on their face. Yeah. You know, they're getting to meet someone like you, an idol in some eyes. Yeah. What's it like to kind of know that you're contributing to the confidence that they have so that maybe they can maybe be a football player yeah. like you? Definitely. It's, it's an amazing feeling because I truly feel like this platform of playing in the NFL is more than just playing football, but it's uh, trying to make a difference. Um, I, like I said, I really have a passion for kids, and I remember being their age, and I would have gave, given everything to meet a lot of those Colts players growing up in Indianapolis. And um, I think it's just more than just them seeing me play football and, and being a great athlete. I think it's 
them seeing someone who's uh, tangible, someone who's very personable that they can ask questions, be themselves around, and see some of them maybe a big figure, but he's just a, a big kid at the end of the day. And but also see somebody who's very passionate about giving back to their community and uh, let them know that they don't have to. Um, necessarily be in my position to give back and give their time and give their resources and give their wisdom. So um, anytime I get the chance to spend time with young kids and young people, um, I believe it's an opportunity to try to make a small impact. I got you. Did you ever notice anybody growing up here in high school or school, maybe they might have had a difficulty with their clothes or maybe having some of those type things? Well, definitely. Um, you know, I, I first went, I was in public school system for a while, and then I even went to a, a private school at high school and um, a lot of the kids who maybe not even were able to afford um, the tuition or were on some sort of um, assistance um, they didn't necessarily have the resources to be able to provide for the, the uniforms that we have to wear every single day and uh, unfortunately I saw some kids getting bullied because of the way that their clothes may be dirty or somebody noticed that they wore the same shirt or the same pants uh, consecutive days and I think that again is just unfortunate because um, a lot of the times with kids you don't understand at that age is a lot of that stuff is out of your control you know what I mean we really rely on our guardians and our parents to be able to provide that and uh, unfortunately sometimes they may not be able to and so I just wanted to be able to provide something that um, through McKinley High School or McKinley Middle School that parents and kids and even you know their staff members can notice some of those things that may be going on and be able to help them be, can step in before things they miss school or, or even uh, get bullied for that. Terry, I know you mentioned your rookie season specifically, but mm -hmm. how far back, even maybe before you had the resources to really do this kind of stuff, how far back was that motivation to be an influence in your community? Uh, it's, I, I, I feel like I've been blessed with a gift of being a giver since a very young age. I've always given and given and given, not just like resources, but my time and my wisdom. Um, before I even knew that I wanted to do this at the highest level. And now that I'm playing in the NFL, like I think it's, I almost feel like a duty to be able to um, be someone who is as competitive off the field as I am on the field. And what I mean by that is I want to be able to provide any kind of resource, any kind of uh, um, anything for these people in our community. And I think it's important for uh, young kids and people just in general to see someone who they may look up to or may see a bigger than life figure, but I don't see myself as that. I just see myself as Terry McLaurin and I was a young kid with a dream and I'm living it out, but I also have a unique opportunity to maximize this platform to uh, just be a small part of people's journey and, and improve the community that's around me. And then how did this relationship with, with United kind of develop over time? Well, United uh, Healthcare has been someone I've been talking to for a while, and um, you know, a lot goes into this process. And they shared a similar vision um, to me, wanting to provide kids with resources that they can just come to school and be themselves, be the best version of themselves. That they could just show up to school and not have to worry about uh, other things that are out of their control. They could just focus on learning and being a kid and making new friends and connecting with their teachers. And so. Um, to partner with someone who shares that vision and then was also very uh, a catalyst in wanting to um, create more locations right away was something that I couldn't turn down when I was looking to start this initiative. So um, they've been great to work with and I'm really looking forward to uh, see how this location grows and the other locations in the DMV. I, I know you're doing this for noble reasons, but mm -hmm. how much does this, what you get, what you get out of this yeah. help you with your day job and getting yeah. ready for the season and things like that? Uh, it's it allows me just to not really focus on football and like I said it allows me just to be human and to connect to people and see and ask people questions and what do they need like I'm I'm really big on you can provide a whole lot of things in when you're doing community endeavors but um, and I don't think that's necessarily bad if you're just giving money or things like that but I, I really want to meet needs that people need and so McKinley High School was uh, McKinley Middle School was uh, struggling with some kids having absences because of that. And um, I just wanted to be able to provide a service for them and something that I, they can really depend on where that can lower those those rates, but also um, help them be confident in the classroom. Of course, we also got some time to talk football with Terry McLaurin. So that's coming up next on this bonus episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And this bonus episode of Locked On Commanders is brought to you by eBay Motors, who knows that passion, drive, and patience 
is what brings home the winning trophy. It's also what keeps your ride or die vehicle alive. And eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle or even level it up to peak performance. They've got superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. So whether you're looking for speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You're always going to find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you get your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP, bring home that win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. This bonus episode of Locked On Commanders is also brought to you by LinkedIn. And LinkedIn knows that when you're hiring for your small business, you're going to want to find qualified professionals, quality professionals that are right for the role you're looking to fill. And that's why you need to check out LinkedIn Jobs because LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. But LinkedIn Jobs and LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn helps you find professionals that you can't and won't find anywhere else. Even those who aren't actively searching for a new job might be open to switching if it's the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't even visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong places. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. So hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and may not have the time or resources to hire properly. So LinkedIn is constantly finding new ways to make the process easier. Two and a half million small businesses are using LinkedIn for hiring. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job opening for free. Terms and conditions apply. While we were on hand to see Terry McLaurin and the Terry McLaurin Foundation unveil its newest initiative towards impacting the Washington, D.C. community in a positive way off the field, we did get a chance to talk to Terry about his efforts on the field. Thank you for making this bonus episode of Locked On Commanders, your first listen of the day, every day. Every dayers, thanks for coming through. We will have more content coming up for you over the weekend and into the week. But if you can't wait that long before you get some sports in you, go ahead and check out Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed every single day to bring you the top sports stories, streaming 24-7 on YouTube again, or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, all part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we are just a couple more days away from, yeah. from the show getting started. Mm-hmm. How are you feeling? You guys ready? Yeah, I'm feeling really good. Um, I'm excited about the, the off season that we all put in. We had a lot of guys working uh, in the facility, honestly. Um, this off season, and guys were just texting each other and making sure everybody was on the same page. And I think we really started laying a great foundation in OTAs. We had 100% participation, which was unbelievable. And uh, we have a lot of things to be excited about. And um, I'm really, really looking forward to putting that work in and um, grinding. And, you know, Coach Quinn has really set a great vision for us. But he's also made the process fun. You know what I mean? I think football is a grind, but it's also fun. You know what I mean? And to be able to start putting the building blocks together now that camp's right around the corner is going to be something that we're all looking forward to. You know, everybody says it feels different. It looks different. Yeah. From a player's perspective, is that noticeable already? Definitely. I think, um, like, I, I believe I talked to you guys in OTAs mm-hmm. where the first few days we didn't even really talk about football. Coach Quinn just wanted us to connect with one another, connect with our coaches, learn each other's backgrounds. And um, I think that's one of the biggest things that stand out because you get to understand another man's why or um, – letting them know that you're there for them because every day is not going to be an easy day. You know what I mean? Throughout this entire season, we're all going to go through ups and downs as a team individually. To know you have someone else that cares about you on a personal level, I think that directly translates to football. And then when we get to the football field, he's created an extremely competitive environment where guys love to compete. You know it's going to be a place for you to be able to earn a spot on this team and to make a name for yourself in this league. And I think he's given everybody the open opportunity to have a clean slate no matter where they're coming from, no matter what their season may have looked like last year. It's a clean and open slate for guys to come in and compete and uh, and try to make this team what it needs to be. Terry, you said before you want to – one of the areas you want to improve is yards after the catch. Yeah. How do you go from a training perspective? How do you work on getting better at that? I think that's a really good question, and um, it's something that I've held myself accountable to. Um, I remember Coach Quinn had us write down – things that we need, wanted to get better at and, and rate certain skills of ours. And I was very honest with myself. At a scale of 1 to 10, I gave, I gave myself like a 3. And everything else I felt really confident was a 4 or close to a 5. But 
uh, yards after catch is something I've, I've done well at certain times, but also a, a part of my game that can really improve. And if you look at the guys in the league who are kind of in that, uh, have that high production, they're really good at yards after the catch. And I think uh, first and foremost is the practice habits with it. I think it's the way that I'm trying to finish when I get the ball. I'm trying to set up our defenders going against the defense. We have a really good defense and guys who are very athletic and can make plays in open space. So. If I'm taking a hitch, it's not just, okay, I'm catching the ball and running 10 yards. I'm trying to set up the defender to get a cutback lane, or I'm trying to use one of my blocks down the field. Um, it's just a certain mentality that I wanted to improve in and uh, not let the first guy tackle me. I think I'm strong enough. I train my body at a very high level to be able to break tackles and to take the durability of the season. But um, just being able to you know, take a five-yard catch and make it a 10- to 15-yard catch, and um, et cetera. And I think it's a mentality, and I think that weighs on the defense when you got – multiple players on your offensive uh, side of the ball that can uh, get a lot of yards after catch. So I know that starts with me being one of our leaders, and I think it's a mentality that we all are buying into, not just myself, and I'm excited to see how that grows. So with Coach Engram coming back for another year, mm -hmm. how valuable is it to have that position coach consistently? Yeah. And then how have your needs from your position coach kind of evolved from your rookie year to now? Oh, uh, it's been unbelievable, honestly, having uh, um, Coach Bobby <laughs> by my side and not just as a coach, but as a man. Uh, he's a, a believer in, in God, and he's really helped me mature as a, a, a believer as well and just um, be the best version of myself each and every day. And then to know that he played at a high level in college, he broke all those records at Penn State, he came to, to the league and had success. Uh, he was kind of an underdog, similar to my story a little bit. And uh, he's really helped me with just being able to perfect my craft. You see me catching a lot of balls on the sideline and in high positions. He's really allowed me to what well, push me to put myself in situations that uh, will show up in practice and show up in the game so you can have that confidence. And, uh, you know, I had some plays that showed up last year that um, I wanted to improve, in, especially low ball catching and just being able to trust that I could go down and, and make those plays without hitting the ground or things like that, staying on my feet. And he's been instrumental in that and just the way he teaches the game the way he's personable with all our guys. He just cares. He, want us, he wants all of us in the room to have success and to achieve our dreams. So to have a guy like that who's really been a great person, but also a guy who knows what it's supposed to look like, and he pushes me a lot. You know what I mean? He gave me, uh, you know, a stat sheet of all the, really the records of, you know, receivers and, and the great receivers that have been in this league or been in our franchise. And, I've never been a guy who's chased records, but it's also something that's sitting in my locker that I'm cognizant of because I want to be, when it's all sitting in, one of the top receivers to ever play here. And so to have that motivation by a guy who believes I can do it, who knows what it takes to, to get there, and he's going to help me do that. How important is chemistry over these next couple of days to be yeah. with some of the teammates and additions, especially the quarterback? 100%. I think it's uh, camp is the time you start to do that. And I think it's different from OTAs because it's an everyday process. You know what I mean? We're just trying to start putting pads on. Uh, kind of, you know, the week starts to separate from the shaft a little bit. You got to, you get to start to see uh, the grind of camp. And I, that's the fun part to me. That's where the team building, you see guys starting to get, get after each other a little bit. The competitiveness juices start to really start flowing. And um, I'm really excited to do that. And I've been in the last few days and the rookies have already gotten started. So. Um, you know, it's good to see all of them in there and, and Jaden especially. I think he's been working really hard this offseason to bring his best version of himself. And we've had conversations about uh, what he wants to do this year and how he wants to just be the best quarterback he could be for us to help us get to the playoffs and reach our, our goals for this season. So um, all the intangibles are there for him. I think it's just a matter of us helping support him because this is going to be a transition for him. He is a rookie quarterback. There's going to be growing pains, but to know he has – uh, a group of guys around him who could take that load off and he could just be himself. You can start seeing his uh, personality continue to show. And I think he's going to grow into one of our top leaders this year. How much were you able to kind of work with Jade in this summer, whether it was at the facility or I know some guys got together uh, elsewhere? Yeah, I didn't get to make it out to that. I had a, a family engagement that I had to make it to, but um, I was in communication with him and Marcus and um, I've gotten some good work here at the facility and uh, I'm itching to get back uh, to, on uh, Wednesday for first practice to really start getting things going. Um, but we had a really good connection going in camp and we really got some good work in. And I think the great the thing that stood out to me about him the most was he's really eager to get extra work after practice. And 
Um, that makes it easy for someone like me because I like to put in the work too. And when you have a rookie who comes in, is not afraid to ask vets to, hey, I need this rep, this rep again. I need one, I want to see this route. What do you need? That open communication starts early and you'll see how it develop as we go throughout the fall. And that's going to do it for this bonus episode of Locked On Commanders. Thanks again for coming through. If you've got any questions or comments, drop them in the YouTube comment section. Of course, you can text me by becoming a Locked On Commanders insider. Go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Commanders. In fact, if you do that in the next 12 to 16 hours or so, you can participate in our first ever Locked On Commanders Insider Zoom, where we're going to have a Zoom conference. It's just going to be me and our insider sitting down, talking ball, talking about a lot of fun things. So if you want to take part in that or anything else coming up here on the insider program, go to join subtext.com slash locked on commanders. Make sure you shoot me a text. Let me know you need that link so I can make sure that you get it. Don't forget, make sure you also check out locked on sports today. The first ever 24 seven streaming sports channel on YouTube. As always, thank you for making locked on commanders your first listen or your first view today and every day, every day. Thanks for coming through for this extra episode this week. Until we speak again, if you're out and about, please be safe, be kind. And we will see you next time for another episode of locked on commanders part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.